Hello, this is my message for today um, based on Romans 8, lines 1 to 11. I would like to say that since I became a Christian, my life has been a perfect example of God's fruits of the Spirit, which the Apostle Paul talks about in Galatians 5. I would like to say that I am always loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, self-controlled, faithful and gentle. I would like to say that I'm never selfish, miserable, argumentative, impatient, less than kind, badly behaved, unrestrained, disloyal or rough. However, this would not be true. In fact, a month after my baptism, I wrote, I feel the presence of Jesus. His strong glow surrounds me, but the lure of the shadows awaits. I feel its seductive pull, magnets of anger, indignation and desire. It whispers to me in its sickly sweet voice. A couple of weeks ago, our minister, Andy, talked about us being in a battle, based on what Paul says in his letter to the Romans. We live in a state of being saved and redeemed, to live a better life, and yet we are still vulnerable and prone to going back to our sins. We are in a never-ending tug of war between behaving and being as God wants us to be and being as the devil would have us be. We are standing in God's light but risk being pulled into the shadows of, by forces of darkness, the dark magnets of Satan. In Romans 8, Paul continues with his explanation of sin and the Spirit of God which saves. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the nature desires, he says. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of the sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. In the tug of war between good and evil, between joy and despair, between light and darkness within each one of us, there is a choice to be made. And it comes down to the question of what is, what is it we most desire? What do we most want? You may have heard the expression, Hell has no fury like a woman scorned. This dates back to a 17th century play, The Morning Bride, which includes the lines, Heaven has no rage like love to hate turned, nor hell a fury like a woman scorned. This is the archetypal revengeful wife, betrayed by her adulterous husband. TV dramas still often include a contemporary version of this character. The ancient Greek playwright Euripides had a powerful version of her in his play Medea. Medea's husband Jason abandons her and her children to marry a king's daughter so that he can join the nobility and climb up socially. Despite Medea's protest, he will not back down from this plan. Medea, in a quest for justice for herself, sets out to destroy him. Firstly, she takes him into her confidence. Then she kills his intended new wife, and then she murders her and Jason's children. Medea is powerless to change her circumstances. She cannot stop Jason leaving her. However, she does choose her response. Her love for Jason has turned to hate. In her inner turmoil between love for her children and her desire to maximise Jason's suffering, she chooses hate and overcomes her maternal love. All sense of peace has been abandoned to her desire to fight. All self-control has been turned to chaos as Jason follows his desires and then Medea her vengeance. Her unfaithfulness has been taken his unfaithfulness has been taken on by her as she breaks her loyalty to her children. Her gentle maternal hand has become one of violence. In the tug of war between good and evil going on within her, she is pulled irretrievably towards evil. Her greatest desire was to get revenge, a self-righteous justice, and this motivated all her choices. In this world, we will never cease to have desires that are carnal, worldly, and not of God. But what motivates us? When we come to faith and are baptised, we are adopted by a new parent, our dad, God. As a child of God, 
our new desire is to please him, our Heavenly Father, because we love him and he loves us. That is what we should have our minds set on. We move over to the passenger seat and let God drive. We let him be in control rather than all our selfish desires. It becomes about him rather than us. If we let God's spirit control our minds, Paul tells us, we will have life and peace. Jesus, we pray, shine your awesome light on us to see ourselves in your eyes, cleansed within. May we demonstrate love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, faithfulness, gentleness. May we gain life and peace. God bless you.